celebrating our fifth anniversary. And I first want to tell you, I want to start by saying what it's not the fifth anniversary of, right? It's certainly not the fifth anniversary of the Occupy movement, which started in September of 2011. It's not the fifth anniversary of Occupy Madison, which started in uh, uh, just a few weeks after the yeah, Occupy movement started in Zuccotti Park in, in uh, I think it was early October we started uh, organizing here. It's not the um, start of Occupy Madison Incorporated, the nonprofit that we uh, founded in order to build this place um, back in, uh, I think it was December of 2012. Uh, this is all about Occupy Madison Village. We are celebrating the fifth anniversary of this village from the time that Russell Albers cut the ribbon in November of 2014. And uh, we are just really, really uh, happy to be doing this. And even if, I think even if no one had showed up at all, we probably would have wanted to have a fifth anniversary party because we've just done so much work. We've had so much, um, so many crazy things have happened in that in that five year period. It's been an incredible uh, roller coaster ride. We've learned a lot about what it takes to pull something like this off. We've learned a lot about each other. Um, we've done a whole bunch of things wrong, which taught us uh, what uh, not to do in the future and what will, what will be invaluable should other cities and communities um, attempt to do what we have done in putting a, a tiny house village for formerly homeless people in a residential neighborhood. Um, we have a lot of wisdom uh, that we've accumulated. I think all of us, uh, without any kind of formal training or degrees, have really become experts on this sort of thing. Um, and I'm, I'm really proud of everybody who's, who's associated with the group and all the people in the community that have helped us. Um, I, would, I want to just say a, a few statements about the residents here. Um, we have, we have, we have the capacity on this property. The city said we are, have, can have up to nine residents, and we have had up to seven. Uh, right now, we have four. And one of the things I find fascinating is that of the four residents we have, three of them are from the earliest days of the Occupy encampment. Uh, Chris Derrick, uh, who lives in the greenhouse, which is the very first house that we built back in uh, 2013. Um, he has been with us uh, since the days of the parking lot on Washington. Um, he has a, an amazing aesthetic sense, and when we're doing tiny house tours later today, I encourage everyone to take a look, not just at his house, but even what he's done around it. With It's kind of hard in the winter to see, but the, 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 um, the gardening and the landscaping that he's done. Um, he's, just, he's just been a remarkable uh, asset. Um, just across the way, we have uh, Sophia, who is all, has also been with us since those early days. And again, when you, when later on today, when we're doing the tiny house tours, I want you to compare what Chris has done, which is kind of a an almost Japanese minimalism, where you know in, in the way he's used the space, and compare that to how Sophia has used the space, which is more like a curio curio shop, you know, filled with like knickknacks and bric-a-brac and tapestries and little uh, uh, objects. It's just, hers is like the ultimate cozy, you know, house, whereas Chris maximizes the feeling of space in that tiny space. And I just think it's interesting that two such contrasting ideas both work really well, and I think you'll be really impressed with what you see. Um, Gene is the outlier in the four residents and that he came along later. It was actually when we were on this property constructing uh, you know, the, the infrastructure, re redoing this building and making the infrastructure complete all around us. Um, Gene came along to volunteer. And it wasn't too long before we were all kind of looking at each other going, yeah, this guy, this guy will fit in. And so uh, he became one of our residents and uh, it's been fantastic. He's a great asset to the community. And finally, I wanted to talk about uh, Russ. He, he, as I mentioned uh, when I started off, Russ is the guy who, cut the ribbon at our opening 
uh, day in November of 2014, and I think that's really fitting because Russ, I think, believes in this project more strongly than anyone else in the group. Um, there was one time when, when uh, we were having a discussion, we were kind of in a dark period and weren't really sure what was going to happen, and we were having a discussion about, well, maybe, you know, this isn't going to work, maybe we should just fold it up, right? Just uh, close up shop, donate the stuff to other nonprofits, and just call it a day, you know, because we were kind of all tapped out emotionally and really didn't know what to do next. And Russ said, we're not going to do that. And we looked at him and he goes, I won't let you. <laughs> and uh, we haven't done it. We've continued to work, move forward. Um, new members have come in, like Leslie Walsh, uh, Barb, who came in at about the same time, who can't be here today, but um, kind of bringing in new, you know, it's, it's one thing to start out a new project when it's novel and it's exciting and it's got lots of media attention and, and everybody's talking about it. But then when the cameras are gone and the public is on to other things and you're just stuck dealing with the very difficult, unglamorous work of making it succeed, um, you do get some attrition because it's just not as fun as when, as when, it's, a, you know, when it's more like a, a media event. But during those periods where we really needed, uh, you know, where we were, we were kind of at a sticking point, we did have wonderful people like uh, Leslie and Barb come in and inject some new energy, and I think it was really a, a turning point for us, and our last uh, year or so has been uh, much the better for it. Um, I, I don't have anything else to say other than uh, I'm, I'm just so glad that this day was here. I, I guess I do have one, one more thing to say, and that is that at a very early meeting, uh, at a neighborhood association meeting, uh, somebody asked, "Well, what what about six? This this is take this, this is back in 2014 before we had even put anybody in here. Somebody uh, at the neighborhood association should be said, "Well, what about six months from now when you've got 14 people living in there?" And I said, "Oh, I don't think we'll have more than six people uh, in the first three or four years because this is going to take a while to figure out." And I was chuckled at. And I was right. This takes a long time. Uh, the, it is not a it is not a simple, straightforward matter. You don't just fill houses full of people. This is a, a this is a community where people have to live together. So we have to have uh, an understanding of uh, uh, common values. I mean, it's not that we all have to be the same politically or have the same religion, but we have to have a, a, a culture of mutual respect, and that takes time to foster. I think we've largely succeeded at that. And as we bring in each new person, we want to make sure that that culture is uh, maintained and, in fact, uh, strengthened. So uh, I'm looking forward to that, however long it takes. Um,